Alleluia, Alleluia. I have chosen and sanctified this house, says the Lord, that my name may remain in all, in it for all time. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The people then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, His disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. This is a beautiful uh, feast uh, today, and um, actually uh, many of us uh, might think that the cathedral in Rome is actually St. Peter's Basilica. Um, And what makes the difference between a basilica and a cathedral uh, is that a cathedral has a chair. Uh, So in Latin, cathedra uh, means the chair, the chair of the chairman uh, that we call the archbishop, here Archbishop Marcel. So the one who's um, seated uh, to receive the wisdom from God and hopefully to leave lead the sheepfold uh, to where we need to go, uh, which is to the Good Shepherd that is Jesus. And the Basilica is a a church that is recognized for its history uh, or for her architecture. And so we have a beautiful Basilica here. We have uh, the chair, so we are a cathedral at the same time. And in Ottawa, we have a very beautiful other Basilica, uh, St. Patrick's as well. And so we are very blessed, uh, just a few kilometers, uh, one from another, uh, to have those very beautiful uh, churches. And uh, actually, uh, we should ask for the Lord to give us this beauty that he wants to give us so that we also become temple of the Holy Spirit. This is a grace uh, that he wants to um, feed us with, in a sense, so that uh, as the sheep, uh, we might continue to follow him and lead others, people, hopefully to him as well. And so in a few moments, uh, we'll receive the body and the blood of Christ, uh, his real presence, uh, which is a, a mystery, uh, but which is uh, quite the reality. So let us ask uh, for this uh, preparation uh, to really uh, help us to receive him uh, as devoutly as we can. When I was uh, preparing uh, for this homily today, uh, one of the things I wanted to share was uh, that it seems that there is a lot of things that are happening and uh, for the last few years as well uh, with this uh, pandemic. And uh, one of the graces uh, we should be praying for uh, is the grace of resilience. And uh, we have, as human beings, uh, are known somewhat for adapting to situations and to have resilience. Uh, But we should ask for the supernatural resilience that the Church needs to continue uh, to follow Jesus, who is the only way, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. 
And then uh, I was thinking about uh, a physical body as we are asking to become more and more temples of the Holy Spirit. And so the resilience of the body in racing, we had the army run. Uh, there was only uh, two distances uh, that are apparently short, five and 10 kilometers. But for me, uh, that's uh, five kilometers too much, <laughs> even the first one. Uh, so let us ask for that resilience of uh, making one step at a time and just knowing that the Lord wants for us uh, to continue and that he has uh, his infinite love is for us in the long run and that he wants to continue to pour out his strength that we need to have to continue as a church, uh, as members of the church, uh, as members of his body. And again, both for who the church is called to be uh, and also for who we are called to be as members of the church, let us pray for a great coordination and uh, the coordination comes uh, ultimately from the head. And so Jesus is the head of the body. Jesus is the head of the church. Uh, there's so many other images, but today that's the one that I want uh, for the Lord to speak to us, uh, to get us uh, motivated, uh, to continue uh, in wherever he is leading us. And we know that ultimately he wants to lead us to himself as he gave his life for us. And... Uh, Maybe you'll find it uh, strange, but uh, one thing I would like to quote uh, today is from a movie, but, uh, and uh, this is a Rocky movie. I don't think I've quoted that here, but this is a scripture passage that spoke to my heart, and obviously this is not the gospel, uh, this is not scriptures, uh, but hopefully you can receive it in a way uh, that, um, like me, it motivates us uh, to continue uh, to fight the good fight, uh, to run the race uh, with Jesus. And uh, St. Paul was using analogies of sports as well, uh, just for the way that he felt the call from God and for encouraging us as well to say yes to the call of God, that he always gives us what we need to continue the journey. And so I'll probably make one or two comments after I read that, uh, because I don't think it's good uh, that we say amen to a Rocky movie. <laughs> Uh, but may some of the reality uh, touch our hearts so that we continue our own journey. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are. It will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. And as I was just reading that, maybe I will try not to add too many comments, but just point to the crucifix, the cross of Jesus Christ. He fell on his knees out of his infinite love for us. And when he felt that he didn't have much strength left, when he was tempted to say, take away this cup from me, which he did, he said, but not my will, but your will be done. And so he's the one that wants to give us the strength today to keep the good fight and to keep walking one step at a time with him who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.